You wanna shock your friends and impress your viewers with your skills? I'm gonna show you how to create a scene like this using the rotor brush and some other AI tools. All right, so I have a clip here of an elephant walking down a pathway in the wild. I wanna rotoscope my elephant and bring him into a different environment. So I'm gonna start by double clicking on my video and I'm gonna use the rotor brush tool or I can hit option W. And if I hold the command key and scroll up or down with my mouse, I can make my brush larger. So I'm just gonna start by doing a very quick swipe over his whole body. Design tools can be so complicated, right? Who has the time to figure them out? For small business owners, startup founders, and solo entrepreneurs, design shouldn't feel this overwhelming. That's where mollypix.ai comes in. Just type what you need and boom, professional designs in under a minute. And here's the best part, you could tweak and edit every design to match your unique vision. Posters, ads, invitations, you name it. Design smarter, not harder. All for less than the price of a monthly Netflix subscription. Give mollypix.ai a try and customize your creations and see how easy great design can be. And you see, the Rotor Brush 3.0, as advanced as it is, it picked it up pretty good. If I wanna fix it, I'm gonna hold the command key and scroll down with my mouse to make the brush size smaller. And I'm just gonna fix his tusk here. If I move around in my timeline, I could take a look and make sure that everything looks okay. Even this little gap between his legs looks pretty good. But for this, for example, what I can do is I could change this to the refine edge tool. And you see it'll turn into a blue color. And I'm just gonna paint my edge here just to soften that edge a little bit. So if I go down to my alpha overlay here, I could see kind of what it what it's gonna look like if I toggle these different settings. That looks pretty good. And I could actually do the same thing with his tail here. Okay, and that looks really good. I would say that I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm gonna click on the freeze button. And this is gonna freeze your roto and it's not gonna have to propagate every time you change frames. So this will take a little bit. So once my roto is frozen, I can go back to my composition and you see I could skim through this and it does a pretty good job at rendering it. So that's one way to speed it up. But what I like to do, I'm gonna to go to composition, pre-render. And in the drop-down settings here, I'm gonna click on lossless with alpha and I'm gonna render this out. And I'm gonna actually use this for my composition instead of the layer that I actually rotoscoped. This just makes it run a lot faster and smoother. Okay, so back in my composition, I'm just gonna hide this layer for now and I'll bring the alpha channel video clip in and you see how much quicker it goes if I scrub through my timeline. This is gonna be helpful once I create duplicates of my layer as well. So now I have to make a background. So I'll export this alpha frame by going to composition, save frame as, Photoshop layers. And once I'm in Photoshop with my elephant on an alpha channel, I'll select all my alpha with the magic wand tool and I'll type in a prompt and hit generate. And after a few generations, Here's what I went with. Looks pretty realistic. I'll hide my elephant layer and export this background as a JPEG. Now I'm gonna bring that JPEG into Runway's Gen 3 Alpha image to video and we'll make the scene come to life a bit. Now just to note, there are some free video generators out there like Haleuo AI and Kling AI. So if you wanna check those out then check the links in the description. Okay, so I have my image uploaded in Runway. One of the reasons I'm using Runway is because of the new feature under the camera control that has static mode. This has been something that I've been hoping for for a while because you have all these camera controls, but if you want a static shot, sometimes when you add it in the prompt box, it doesn't actually do what you want. But now with the static mode, all you have to do is check this box and the camera will be static, but there'll be motion added to your scene. So I'll add my simple prompt. I'm gonna make this 10 seconds just to have a little bit of breathing room and I'm gonna hit generate. And here's the video clip that it generated. Pretty good. So now I'll bring that in as my background in After Effects behind my elephant layer. First thing I'm gonna do is add the simple choker to the edge of my elephant just to clean some of the edge. So now I have to worry about motion tracking as there's slight motion on the video. So I'll click my background layer and I'll go to Animation, Track in Boris FX Mocha. And I'll click the Mocha icon and Mocha will pop up. Now from here, I'll select my X-Spline tool and I'll select a few points right in the focus area of the road here. And I'll click Show Surface and Align Surface. This will help when applying the parameters to my elephant layer, it'll remain the same proportions as the composition. And I'll hit Track Forward, and that looks good. I'll save, close out of Mocha, and jump back into After Effects. And I'll drop down the tracking data and click on Create Track Data. 
And under Layer Export 2, I'll select my elephant layer and I'll hit Apply Export. And you see the camera movement is applied perfectly. So now for really selling the shot, we need to add some shadows. I'm gonna duplicate my alpha elephant layer and on the bottom version, I'll isolate it and I'll apply the drop shadow effect. In the effect controls, I'll select shadow only and I'll mask out the bottom portion where the feet are and I'll feather that quite a bit. Now bringing back my other layers, you could see what we really did here and make any adjustments. So I'll make this shadow a lot harder and dark, so this will be my contact shadow. So now for my other shadow, I'll duplicate this layer, I'll expand the mask, and in these drop shadow settings, increase the distance and increase the softness. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll just lower the opacity a little bit. And this is my general shadow. And after a little color correction, here's our final result. 